I've noticed that with very young players or improvers, it's quite a good idea to play a game of chess just with the king and the pawns. And the winner is the person who gets a pawn to the other end first. This inevitably, after a few games uh, using this technique, leads us to examining what happens with pawn majorities and how one wins in those situations. And we've got a classic case on the board in front of us. If you just say, well, White wins this automatically to an improving player, they'll look at you and they'll wonder what you're talking about. But then you can demonstrate that actually White has what we call a poor majority on the king side and it should be a, he should be able to force a pawn through to Queen using this majority. Black can't stop him because he's only got two pawns against three. The student will say, yes, but Black's got a pawn majority on the other side of the board. He's got three pawns to two over there on the queen side. Then you say, yes, but Black's got a double pawn. And this slows the whole thing down. It makes it more difficult for Black to force a pawn through. And then we play a game out from this position. And you show them the winning technique. Which is something like this. White starts with f4. I mean, clearly, White should begin to activate his pawn majority in order to get a pawn through to the other end. So black tries to do likewise. White pushes his pawn up. Black does likewise. And now white gives a check. Black moves his king and now king to f4. Already a little bit awkward for black, whose king is feeling cramped. Well, g5 check looks nasty, so black tries to stop it. He can't stop it for long, though, as white plays h4. And now black rather feebly tries to push his own pawns. G5 check. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And black's king has to give way. The white king invades. Even at this early stage, it's a really good idea to get your students used to the idea, the fact that the king is a strong piece in the end game. And early examples like this just demonstrate that beyond doubt. So black takes the opposition. White moves across with his king. Black takes the opposition again. White moves across one more time. Well, White's threatening King B6 here and mopping up all of Black's pawns, so Black has to oppose him. And now White moves in with the excellent move F6. Black must take it, and now White can win in two ways. He can take the pawn, or, well, I think G6 is the easiest way, after which White easily queens his pawn. So right back to the start, let's go back. Do tackle the idea of pawn majorities in end games like this. Simple examples like this are crucial and the beginner can learn a lot from them.